It's a way of life that's endured for centuries. But climate change is destroying Mongolia's nomadic ways. For every family risking the freedom of the steppe, another is giving up and moving to the slums. Is it the end of the road for nomads, or could Mongolia's younger generation find a middle way? I've reported from more than 100 countries as a foreign correspondent, and I've found Mongolia to be probably the most awe-inspiring and fascinating of all. So it's been sad to follow its recent troubles, not from coronavirus, but from the far bigger problem of its changing climate. The landlocked country is warming three times faster than the world's average, turning its grass-covered steppe into desert and melting 40% of its glaciers since the 1990s. In a cruel irony, that's making its freezing winters even more dangerous as extreme weather events kill the weakened livestock. It's a vicious circle that would test the hardiest nomads. But in Mongolia, you find the strongest people you could ever meet. The vast Mongolian steppe is the only home Surunhu Sanchit has ever known. Since she was a girl, the livestock they herd across it provided all their needs. Now they're dying. She and her husband Sozhporov breed sheep, goats, cows and horses. In the past, they made a small but livable income selling meat, milk and cashmere. Now it's a fight for survival. <laughs> The family has to herd the animals further and further across the steppe to find fodder. As summer temperatures have soared, the soil has become less fertile, and the animals have been losing the fat they need to survive the winters. <laughs> As bad as the summers are, winters have become the biggest killers. In 2010, nearly a quarter of the country's livestock perished when temperatures plunged to minus 50 amid gale force winds. Mongolians have a name for this white death. They call it Tsud. It used to be a rare event after an exceptionally dry summer, but the National Agency for Meteorology and Environmental Monitoring says climate change is making it the new normal. You're not. I'm just saying, but you're not. 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 You're not.
дөрөн удаа одоо энэ хээрийн бүс нутгад хоёроос дөрөн удаа зуд тохиолдож яхад саяны миний хэлсэн энэ тасан бүрхүүл тогтдгийг энэ бүс нутгад бол 10 жилийн 4-оос 6-аад нь зуд болох нөхцөл бүрддэг. Баян үйлгээ аймгийн булган дэлгүүн сумнд бол мал хоргодсон мэдээтэй байгаа. Last year Surinhu and Sochporov endured a harsh sword. Today they face another blow. Their entire herd of 37 horses has run away. After days of waiting for them to return, Sojporov has no choice but to leave his family and search for them. They could be anywhere between here and the distant mountains. <laughs> Disasters like this are forcing more and more herders to leave the steppe. Most end up here in the capital Ulan Bator. Hundreds of thousands have set up their tents, known as yurts, on the city outskirts. <laughs> Sumya and Oyan Bator came here with their children in 2008. They have painful memories of the Tsud, which ended their lives as nomads. <laughs> Oyan Bato has no qualifications. It's been tough to even find low-paid jobs like sweeping streets or labouring. So for two years he's been scavenging at the local rubbish dump. Nearly 500 people eke out a living in this toxic tip. Most are former nomads. Oyan Bator often works from dawn to midnight. Today he's made 30,000 Tugrik. That's about $13, just enough to feed his family of six and heat their yurt. Today, 
тэгэн шиг мөрөн бол уу юм аа ч гэсэн бол төрөн штэ бас Back on the step, Surin Hu and her children look after the remaining stock while her husband searches for the horses. Animal feed is expensive and their meager supply is running low. They're worried that Sushparov hasn't come home. It's been three freezing days since he left. <laughs> It's minus 23 outside, but she's burning animal dung to make the yurt warm and welcoming. Friends from a neighbouring valley have come to visit. She serves them traditional salty tea with milk and they catch up on news and gossip. They all head off to the local well. It's two kilometres away and Surinhu drives to it several times a week. Around 20 families come here to get water for themselves and their stock. They're lucky to have it. Thanks to climate change, lakes and rivers are drying up. The water table is dropping every year. Half these old water stations date back to communist days. Strange as it seems now, nomads once worked for the state. In 1924, the Soviet Union took control, declaring the People's Republic of Mongolia. Herders were grouped into socialist collectives. The state gave them free education, medicine and veterinary care. There was even a guaranteed market for their wool and cashmere. In return, the state limited the size of herds. When communism collapsed in 1990, nomads lost state support, but they were free to breed more animals. It's become an environmental disaster. Today, there are 70 million livestock, more than three times the Soviet cap devouring grass and roots, turning even more land into desert. 
But the government knows if it tries to cut numbers, it could face a backlash from struggling herders like Sozhporov. After three days of searching, he returns empty-handed. Their worst fear is that the herd has frozen or starved to death. For this couple, the idea of giving up their way of life is unthinkable. Their dream is that their son, Billet, will grow up to be a herder. But his chances are looking slim. In Ulaanbaatar, scientists are predicting catastrophic change. At the National Meteorology Agency, Dulum Sarandushku and her colleagues have been modelling temperatures if global emissions don't fall. Their grim conclusion, a rise of up to six degrees in Mongolia by the end of the century. Өнөөгийн байдлаар бол их дулааралтаас одоо юу болоо Монгол улсын бол сэвдэг болол маш их хэр хайсан байж байгаа. Сэвдэг хайлаад ирэхэд бол энэ хуучин байшин байрлаг одоо суулт өгөх, эргээд энэ сэвдгээс их авч байгаа гол мөрнүүд маань эргээд хатаж гандах гэд эргээд бид нэр усны өндний хомсдол гэсэн маш том дэвсгэр гадар хуур шин ер нь хуур ашилт гэдэг маань хөрснийн гадар дээр бол ямар нэгэн байдлаар одоо ургамал байхгүй л ер нь л энэ хуур нэг юм нэг шороо юу болно гэсэн үг л нэг бодлын яг зүйл гэж ойлгож болно. Тэгэхээр зэрэг бид нэг үнэхээр хоол хүнс нийт юм аюултай нөхцөлд одоо цаашдаа хомсдолд орох бол нөхцөл л. The challenge of finding a way through all this occupies the minds and music of Mongolian band The Who. The band come from herd of families. The band fuses traditional throat singing with heavy metal. Their lyrics exhort Mongolians to save their traditions and their homeland no matter where they live. Their unique style, using instruments like the horsehead fiddle and Mongolian guitar, have earned them a big global following. But they measure their success in spreading the message at home. They want to inspire the young generation to keep their culture. Мэдээж байлгүй яг хөө бидний гол одоо бас дүнцтнээс ялгарч байгаа зүйл нүүдэл чинь энэ соёл шүү дээ. Ер нь бол 
бидрийн бас уус үндэстний салгах зүйл бол нүдлийн соёл. Одоо ингээд миний үеэр одоо тийм манай хүүхдүүд л бол ингээд хөдөө мэдгүй үсэх болж байгаа. Би хамгийн сүлжийн жишээнд болж хуурч хуурч чадах байхгүй. Би бол хөдөө өссөн мал мал ундаг одоо тэгэл хонь хариулдаг урга шигний араас гүдэг хүүхдээсэн. Тэгэл манай хүүхдүүдээс эхлээд одоо ингээд энэ хөдөө мэдгүйгээр ялчгүй хотод өсөөд хотын хүүхдүүд болж эхэлж байгаа. Тэгэхээр энэ нүдлчдийн соёлыг бол бид бүхэн бол одоо энэ Монгол улс ялангуй яа Монгол хуурахтангууд бол маш их анхаарч энэ нүдлийн соёла үргэлж хадгалж үеэс үед өвлүүлэх хэрэгтэй гэж бид нар бол боддог. Тийм ч учраас энэ хүннүүр рок Their growing fame has helped draw attention to the plight of nomads on the steppe and in the slums. Тэгэл нөгөө малчны өөрийнх нь амжиргаа явж идэ тэр мал нь Тэгэл хаа явах уу одоо тэгэл хот руу орж ирэх болдог. Ингээл хотын төвлөрөл ихсэлж юм ингээл. Яг би үнээсээ ингээл хамааралтай гинжин юм хэлхээнүүд явж байгаа байхгүй. Энэ энэ бүх зүйлийг л маш сайн л одоо уламжлалт байдалтайгаа хослуулсан юм суурьшмаа соёлтой бас хорш тохорш нэг нийцүүлсэн юм агүй зүв байдлаар л ингэж хөвжүүлж байхгүй бол энэ чинь ингээл in the past 20 years the population of Ulaanbaatar has doubled to 1.6 million mainly due to the rural exodus in response the government has banned migration to the capital and refuses to register settlers like the rubbish collector Oyanbaatar that means his kids can't even go to a government school тэгэхээр малаас болж л багнасаа сургуулаа яша одоо тэгээд одоо бодоход хаарна шүү дээ юм аа би өөртөө очсон бол би одоо ингэж ядар руу амьдрах ч юу мэрэгчлэрийг хөгжөд гой амьдрах ч юу дээ хаарна шүү дээ тэгээд тийм болохоор өөрөө тэгж алдсан болохоор хүүхдүүдээ сургуулийн бүрэнгүй сэтгэл хэл Every morning he takes his son and daughter to a private school run by an NGO and funded by foreign donations it takes in kids who aren't registered with the government but the qualifications aren't officially recognized so they can't continue their studies anywhere else even the smallest kids depend on this charity the ngo runs nurseries for children of the migrants working at the rubbish dump хэдийн тэр хүмүүсийн ерхийг нь ингээд хуулаараа хориглоод одоо энэ нүүлт нүүж ирэхийг нь бодлоо зогсоолоо гэсэн боловч энэ хүмүүс нүүж ирээд суурьшаад бүртгэлгүйгээр ингээд амьдраад байгаа эрүүл мэндийн үйлчлэгээгээ авч чадахгүй за гурав дахь ингээд хэрвээ амжиргааны төвшин доогуур хүмүүс байх юм бол энэ хүмүүс хороноос тодорхой хэмжээний хүнсний талонд хусламж авах боломжтой бүгдийн мөнгө авах боломжтой байдаг тэр In the city, temperatures often drop to minus 25 Celsius, and Oyan Bato has to keep his family warm. A quarter of his income from scavenging goes on coal for cooking and heating the yurt. Back on the steppe, he found his own food and fuel. In the city, everything is paid for in cash. А ер нь тогтмол бол байж чадахгүй. Яа. Мөнгөнөөхөө боломжоор давна да. Авах цаг чинь өөрөө бас нэг ажиллагаа байрнаас бас төлөө мөлдөө цогтуулж байна. Тэгж л байна. The increased coal burning has made Ulaanbaatar one of the world's most polluted cities. In 2019 the smog became so dense authorities tried to ban raw coal for domestic cooking and heating. It helped but there are still alarming rates of cardiovascular disease and respiratory infection. Children are the worst affected by pollution and the most likely to be hospitalized. Pneumonia is now the leading cause of infant death. За ямар зөвөртэй байна? Халуурсан. 30 сая. Өөр яаж вэ? Хит тонжин. Гурамч. Children who grow up in Ulaanbaatar often have breathing problems. 
their lung capacity is 40% lower than children on the step. Back on the step, Sozhparov still hasn't found his horses. After a day's rest, he's heading back out to look for them. He wants to sell some to get through winter, and he desperately needs them back. Thank you.